I'm Melly. I'm Chris. And this is Beggar's Belief, home of hoaxes, pranks, scams, shams, and scar charlatans. And scatting. Who needs it for music? I got us. You got us. You got us. the moon i kind of like it like i like to look up at it sometimes sometimes it makes me feel infinitesimally small and i don't like looking at it then but i like that it's out there popular with werewolves yeah yeah the lupine community really really appreciates (laughs) that uh that stellar body it has yeah yeah on again off again relationship with the tides though oh fair enough yeah (laughs) yeah and and fester adams yeah so once again we are going to do this where i present a story that you have to throw yourself into the midst of and you see if you can figure out what is true and what was the lie. This is going to be a rather long story, by the way. All right. Because so, uh, <laughs> I have opinions on the moon landing, but I don't think we're going there. No, 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 no. This is 150 years before someone had to, like, punch Neil Armstrong. <laughs> yeah, this is... <laughs> Taking the Wayback Machine. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sherman and Mr. Peabody's style. This is exceptionally old-timey, yeah. So the year is 1835. All right. Actually. Yes, yes. At least it's not 1921. No. No wang wang blues yet. You live in New York City. Okay. And you pick up your daily paper, which happens to be the sun. Oh, we're talking about the moon. Yes, we are. All right. You're reading about the moon in the, in sun. the sun. Yes. Okay. Uh, you see this article saying that they're a famous astronomer by the name of Sir John Herschel. And it says, publishes a series of articles written by his assistant, Dr. Grant, about discoveries observed on the moon. The article states this is a reprint that this is actually of the original, which was printed in the Edinburgh Journal of Science. The articles are printed over the course of six days as you pick up your daily paper, which we may find out later was more difficult than you'd think. Saying, we have the happiness of making known to the whole civilized world recent discoveries, which will build an imperishable monument to the age in which we live and confer upon the present generation a proud distinction through all future time. Like you I have said, my attention. I am reading my paper right now. I am digging into this headline. Yes, it's exceptionally old timey. So. so the first day's description, fairly dry, about Herschel had, or had developed a massive telescope and had it transported to Cape Town in South Africa. Mm-hmm. The next day ramps up details. They slowly discovered the geology of the moon up close. And the description of the plant life they discovered there. Uh, of course. Yes. yes. Yeah. Everything is described in detail, like it is heavenly, more gorgeous and perfect than anything on Earth. Like manna from the moon. Yes. Yes. They looked at the ocean, the ocean yeah. on the moon, and saw fairer shores, never angels coasted on a tour of pleasure. A beach of brilliant white sand, girt with wild, castellated rocks, apparently of marble, moving along our screen until we were speechless with admiration. Okay. Mm-hmm. There, on, science. there are giant pyramids that they thought at first were man-made, but then realized they were just massive, perfect amethyst crystals. There's an island <laughs> that was about three miles long, made of pure sapphire. And then they just found veins of gold jutting up everywhere. How many, how many telescope glimpses do you think it took before colonialism entered their mind? Oh, we'll get to that. All right. <laughs> yes, right. yes. Space colonialism. <laughs> Readers were hooked for the next article when they described the animals that they found on the moon. Bisons with brow ridges, a blue unicorn goat, perfectly spherical fish, and beavers that walked upright and lived in huts with chimneys that billowed smoke. I think they have ghosts in their blood and they've been doing cocaine about it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The, the, The next day, however, Herschel finally said in this article, Now, gentlemen... We have here something worth looking at, because apparently none of the rest of it, the unicorn goats, not worth it. Not worth it. The sentient, of amethyst crystals. Sentient beavers, not, not worth it. Yeah. Yes. Finally, they then announced the discovery of creatures close to human on the moon. Flying humans with bat wings. They named them Vespiritillo Homo, meaning man bat. Yep. Mm-hmm. Four feet tall, copper hair. 
and in an inexplicable dig towards lower-class Londoners, the face was a slight improvement upon that of the orangutan. Lieutenant Drummond said that they would look well on a parade ground as, as a part of the Cockney militia. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. If you've got up a little somebody, I guess. So they could even tell the disposition of the man-bats, who are described as idyllic, happily, and openly mating. I hate that we lost this incredible telescopic technology to time. Oh, it, th there is a story about that. Okay. <laughs> After this, next day, they found huge buildings and cathedrals. And this is actually when they lost the telescope, because uh -huh. the next day reports that they didn't cover the telescope lens properly, and the lens caused a fire. <laughs> Oh, like it does. Yeah, yes. and and burnt down. Mm. Yeah, the building. So, what do you think is real and what's fake there? I believe newspapers existed in the 1800s. <laughs> the moon's real. <laughs> there are people who are who disagree with you on that. I'm not, I would tell me about it. Also, those same people. Mm -hmm. If the Earth is flat as you claim it is, mm -hmm. why haven't cats pushed everything off of it? Yeah, there you go. Science. No, I think this is dope. This has to be like. This has to have been drumming up, not like some sort of like, I don't know. Th these are like <laughs> penny novelty stories that somebody was drumming up for science fiction at the time. This sounds like a great way to like get interest in your ads and your publishing magazines to go, oh, wait, I read about this in the newspaper. Look, there's this great fictional story over oh, here. You are more right than you realize. All right. Only it's far weirder than that. <laughs> Please educate me. Okay. So there is one thing about this was 100% was true. The very first sentence I said, Sir John Herschel was indeed an astronomer in 1895. In fact, he was a very well-known astronomer, probably the best known of his generation. He came from a family of astronomers and was the only person who could walk up to you and say with a straight face, my daddy discovered Uranus. Usually straights don't say that. <laughs> There's nothing straight face about that, but I'll give him that one. Fair enough. Yeah. He was Cambridge educated, was one of the founders of the Royal Astronomical Society. In his work, he identified and named seven moons of Saturn and four mm -hmm. moons of Uranus. Mm -hmm. He also studied botany, invented the blueprint, and investigated colorblindness. And other than using his name, he had jack shit to do with the article mentioned. I was going to say, because I don't think... Typically, the people that I do know who study botany, no one has stopped me and gone, you know what the next step is? Lunar botany. Yes. Lunar bison. Lunar bison. Yes. Yeah. He never had an assistant named Dr. Grant. And actually didn't find out about this article until months after it was published. <laughs> I wish it could have been there when he did. So the articles were believed by a huge number of people, and it's important to have a little bit of context why. New York in 1835, dirty, crowded. Closer to that old movie, Gangs of New York. Old movie? I mean, fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Come on. We're old. We're elder millennials. I'm as I lean closer to the mic. Yeah, come on. Neither of us have good hit between us. <laughs> Just a few years earlier, there had been riots because they started making people pen up their hogs instead of making them roll, roam the streets. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Yeah, this is also the buildup to the Civil War. Yeah. So there's a lot going on politically. Uh, most people, newspapers of the era were either written for specific audiences or for, for the wealthy elite. Yeah. Um, it was the first push for penny papers, which what? were oh, yes. written for the more... That's where we got Barney um, the Vampire. So yes, exactly, like exactly. But also astronomy, huge interest among the public at mm -hmm. the time. Halley's Comet was 1835. Yeah. So there's a lot of prophecy and doomsayers about Halley's Comet that are happening, but there's also a lot of people going out and buying a telescope for the first time to see it, learning about astronomy for the first time. So it's tying into a lot of interest that your average person would be dabbling in slightly. Also, I'm not quite sure that we had the appropriate sun filters for telescopes yet, so I imagine there are quite a few people who went, I can see a star. Uh, the article was really well written. I mean, honestly... That's the other thing that kind of ticked me off, too, that Herschel was not involved with this. I don't think most astronomers who were into scientific writing at the time would concoct into what was appearing in that paper. Yeah, yeah. Article, very well written, was paced to draw people in and create a suspension of belief. The first day was just a description of this telescope, how it was produced, written very dry, scientific, by the numbers. For instance, it was described as being a hydro-oxygen microscope, which 
means nothing. The lens would said to be 24 feet across and had a magnifying power of 42,000 times and weighed nearly seven tons after being polished. Mm, what was the pre-polish? That's the it, you know, question. it doesn't say. Right. It doesn't See? say. You know. Bullshit. The scope was said to be able to re- reveal objects in our lunar satis- satellite of little more than 18 inches in diameter, which still would not be true with that magnification. All of these images would then be projected on a screen oh. in real time. Okay. Which I thought was really interesting because this is, there, there's no concept of movies. So it's more like a camera obscura yeah. sort of thing. Also, that in of itself would really attract that, a lot of intrigue at the era. The fake telescope was supposedly backed by the Royal Society, who got funding from King William IV. Somehow, the lens only took a week to make. Herschel was supposedly coming up with these brilliant plans on how to make it that made other people like, my God, why has no one ever thought of that before? You know, this is such a simple solution that has solved everything. Yeah. What if we curve the glass? Man, it magnifies so much better than that flat glass. <laughs> the article claimed this was going to be set up in Cape Town in South Africa because it is nighttime there during the day in England. Mm. They're only Cape Town is only two hours off of Greenwich Mean Time. I was about... So I'm not quite sure why they thought that claim would work. Herschel's fake setup sounds like a party being described as... Aided by several companies of Dutch boar, he proceeded at once to the erection of his gigantic fabric. I'm going to let that sentence swish around in my head for a bit while you continue. Yeah, no problem. Making the article seem more believable on the second day, they actually issued a correction. Oh, sorry. I thought they are going to issue an erection. No, 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 no. The erection was issued the first day. It was actually $70,000, but it was listed as pounds. Mea culpa, mea maxima culpa, yeah. So when the story built up, it got bigger. People had already, were primed to believe it. By the fourth day of publication, The Sun was the most widely circulated periodical outselling the Times of London. The presses were running 10 hours a day. There were rumors of reprints and people stood in line outside the office for hours to try to get a paper. While they were there, a well-dressed British man came and chatted with them, saying he was really happy the world was out, word was out he could talk about this because he was part of the company that had shipped this telescope. I don't know if this guy was actually involved in it or just jumped on the cloud, <laughs> but it also added to the belief. Look, this is, this is present day akin to a midnight release of a Twilight book. Mm-hmm. And some mm-hmm. dude in the store comes out and goes, I am so glad I can talk about the time that I played baseball with the Cullen. So the Sun later published special pamphlet editions compiling all the articles, and it sold 60,000 copies for 13 cents today each, which would be $4.50 today for just a little pamphlet. Newspapers all over the world are reprinting these articles. When the belief was at its height, there were discussions by scientists at Yale. They actually had like advertisements, like, let's get together and discuss this. And after this, they actually showed up at the Sun's office asking for firsthand reports so that they could better investigate it than what they're getting from the newspaper. The funny thing was that the Sun's response was, well, we're just reprinting this article. We don't have the first source. That's from the Edinburgh Scientific Journal. You'll have to go to them. It was only much later that anyone realized the Edinburgh Scientific Journal had been out of print for like years. See, this is a wonderful case in point for why I miss widespread print media so much. You shouldn't. This is terrible. No, no, no. Just the fascination of getting a group so invested in a subject to this degree. You just can't do this anymore because things are so instantaneous. I do like being able to fact check sources so very quickly and rapidly with actual experts. But boy, like Wikipedia shipping to your door and showing up with something like this and like the night and like 1992. Like, but this song was around then too. So it's yeah. So so it was the boon. Mm. Oh, yeah, it was. <laughs> Both of them pretty round. That pun was on me. Man, what the it hell was is wrong with me? No sphere. That's fear. Two spheres. Quote said, everyone was saying, have you read the accounts of Sir John Herschel's wonderful discovery? Have you read The Sun? Have you heard the news of the man in the moon? These were the questions you met everywhere. It was the absorbing topic of the day. No one expressed or entertained a doubt as to the truth of the story. Now, honestly, that should have been a misprint. Because it's not the man in the moon, it's the Batman in the moon. Na, 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 na. Missionary trips, as you... Yeah. To the moon? Yeah. Yes. Starting yeah. to be planned. There were fundraisers, including one in the Exeter Hall in London. I love the first thing is how do we get religion to the bat people? 
Yes. Nobody questioned anything until the Man Bat article. First, like, three days, nobody questioned it at all. A few of the rep- our newspapers reprinting the articles had disclaimers on it after that. Finally, it broke. It was a hoax. The Journal of Commerce officially published that it was a fraud on August 30th. Then they pro- pointed out that it was a probable offer was Richard Adam Locke. Locke was born in Britain and claimed to be descended from one of my favorite historical figures, John Locke. Yes, he, I was going to add. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Claim to, I mean. Claim to. <laughs> yes. He worked for the London Republican before moving to New York. His biggest story was covering the case of Robert Mattias, also known as Matthias the Prophet, who claimed to be Jesus and then killed one of his followers. Listen, I have very good sources that this is explicitly true. My source was a unicorn goat from the moon, but... I heard it from the moon. The shook on it. <laughs> so Locke apparently, as you guessed, created the hoax to drive sales. When he was outed as the author, he re- he published a rebuttal. See an emoji here. I don't know how you just look at my ceiling. <laughs> the answer is going to be I'm looking there. at the moon now. <laughs> no, you're looking at my upstairs neighbor. <laughs> as unequivocally as the words can express it, I did not make those discoveries. Totally that's pulled it wasn't me. That's very Bill Clinton-ish. <laughs> wasn't me, wasn't me. That only drove more sales. And the Sun starts publishing back and forth between supporters and detractors in order to drive sales. The Sun stated it wouldn't redact the articles until that we have the testimony of the English or Scotch papers to corroborate such a direct decoration. In the meanwhile, let every reader of the account examine it and enjoy his own opinion. This is also what I said. The Edinburgh Scientific Journal that they claimed it was from, long since out of print. Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Other papers started publishing parodies. Things like fake real estate listings for lunar properties. There are tons of artwork of the lunar properties and creatures on the moon. This is long before the concept of journalistic integrity. I love the establishment of fan fiction that occurred with this. This is wild. This is like AO3 of their time. This is incredible. Funny you should say fan fiction. Okay. Really good timing, actually. No one was upset as the as anyone else. As Edgar Allan Poe. Of course it would be Poe. In June of that year, he had started publishing a story called Hands Fall, A Tale, which was about a balloon trip to and from the moon. It was written as a series of letters with an unreliable narrator. Poe claimed he wanted it to be viewed as a true account and had spoken with a lot of other people about this idea. He said the only difference between his story and the published one is one of his tone of banter, the other one in downright earnest. He also claimed that he knew that he was the only one that knew the moon hoax was fake from the get go and couldn't believe that others believed it. (laughs) I'm too smart. There's a sign here. X, actually. He was quoted as saying that one person in 10 discredited it, and strangest of all the doubters were chiefly among those who doubted it without being able to say why. A grave professor of mathematics in a Virginian college told me seriously that he had no doubt about the truth of the whole affair. If I believe in imaginary numbers, Mr. Poe, I can believe in goat unicorns <laughs> on the moon. Thank you. And us. I deal with fee every day. What's a little sentient goat beaver? <laughs> so much later, Poe rescinded his claims that he was plagiarized. But I actually think there might be some credit to this because there's reports that one of Poe's editors at the time, Richard Adams Locke. Yeah. Mm. Hmm. Regardless, the Sun went on to publish Poe's uh, story, The Balloon Hoax. So, yeah. Who's the real unreliable? Mm-hmm. 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 So as far as Herschel goes, you have to feel bad for him. I, I do. <laughs> yes. He's actually working in South Africa at the time that this all went down, almost coincidentally from the story. Didn't find out about it until months later. His wife was at home and gets inundated with all of these letters. And she later said... The whole description is so well clenched with minute details and names that the New Yorkists were not to be blamed for actually believing it. It's a great pity it's not true. I love the idea of her getting inundated with these communications about this story and having to go to her husband and say, Dear, I thought you were an astronomer, not an astrologer. I just like that people apparently called them New Yorkists back then. Bring it back. We need to bring it back. Honestly? I think you'd get punched. 
those they punch me anyway. Yeah, it's true. It's New York. <laughs> I lied. The last time I was in New York, I had my mom with me, and everybody was very nice it to her. Wonderful and great. That's yeah. why I just I, I think we should bring it. Back. I think yeah. they should like New York come together. Yeah, New York. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Herschel himself nowhere near as well funded as his fictional counterpart. Most of his research was self funded, and his actual South African research base was staffed by one handyman. Mm-hmm. So they're overcompensating for the telescope size. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's comes, the only fallacy in this story. <laughs> he comes back home and finds out that he had gained fame for something he had nothing to do with and earned a beef with Edgar Allan Poe. <laughs> I love that this is also the TMZ of the time. Yeah. This is, I... I just wouldn't want to piss off Edgar Allan Poe. No! The man wrote the cast of Amontillado no. and, and, and the Pit and Pendulum. Um, he, he's not somebody who you want to have a grudge. No! Unless you want to, like, feed him some alcohol and leave him... On a side street in a ditch somewhere overnight. <laughs> Sorry to all you Poe po fanatics out there. I happen to be one. So Herschel, haunted by his story for years because it surpassed his actual research. He was quoted as saying, I've been pestered from all quarters with that ridiculous hoax about the moon in English, French, Italian, and German. Wait, it surpassed all of his research? Yes. You don't say. <laughs> you don't say. He wasn't at the level of discovering biodiversity on the moon? No. Not no, quite there no, yet. No, not yeah, there. Sorry, no, yeah. Get a better telescope. Yeah. Story had long-term effects. While later, Sun published an article about a massive New York fire that actually happened. And where other papers reprinted it, they actually put a disclaimer. This is from the Hot Sun. Yikes. Four years later, the astronomical discoveries actually have little mentions of the moon hoax, basically telling people, be careful what you believe. It's funny, like, for a generation, when you actually search for great, search for the great moon hoax, it comes up for 50 years that people are still, yeah. But it also was earned a lot of respect for being well-written. P.T. Barnum stated Locke's work was the most stupendous scientific imposition upon the public and the generation which we are numbered has known. I mean, it's also interesting with the parallel of over 100 years later, you get something similar in the radio play, essentially, of or the worlds. Like, you get this whole phenomena, again, with a new medium. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So when do you think that, how long do you think it took the sun to re- actually post a redaction? I'm going to say 20. No. Redactions from the sun? Mm-hmm. Actually mm-hmm. providing a redaction. 1995. They never did. Of course. And they never actually verified it was Locke who wrote it. Yeah. yeah. It's it's one of those well-known, never verified by him or the sun. They kept it under lock and key. <laughs> so in 2010, it was the 175th anniversary, and they officially stated, for the moment, let us say that we're not aware, that we are aware of the claim that there are no lunar man bats, neither on the, on the moon or here. Rest assured. We're still looking into it. <laughs> Telescopes. And that is the story of the Great Moon Hoax. That was not where I was expecting that to go. I had no idea that this was a thing. I know of the sun's existence. I enjoyed the sun as a publication a lot as a child in my grandparents' convenience store. I'm a ginger. I don't enjoy the sun. I just burned. The- <laughs> okay, fair enough. I mean, like, to be fair, Herschel got burned, too. But yeah, just the fact that this can persist for so long, this publication still exists, And it is for entertainment purposes only. But so many people take this at face value. They just see this because it's, I guess, the other thing too is just the power of seeing print media is you see something like that stacked next to things like The Times, like The New Yorker and all. But at the time, The Sun was more everyman news. It was still news. But this is before there was any kind of journalism as we know it didn't right. exist, it was kind of on good faith that you're not lying, yep. which is why when you read a lot of articles back then, it's it's what's going to sell the paper. So stuff was dra- dramatized and you kind of have to be careful of it. Which hasn't really changed much, honestly, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> They've gotten louder. <laughs> I mean, okay, it's changed for the worse. It's changed for the worse. But yeah, yeah. Oh, the sun, vibrant, hot, flashing Big star. Lately full of flares. Lots of yeah, flares. Anyway. Full of flares. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, yeah. I have a lot of flare ups these days too. They're not fun. Yeah. Yeah. Elder Millennial. Yeah. Elder Millennial. I wasn't there when this was written, but close. I do know of Bat Boy. I was there when that <laughs> when that like... magic was written. All right. Yeah. So that's that. That's that. This is Beggar's Belief. 
And from this side of the microphone, don't believe everything you hear.